<laughs> oh god, it's never that smelly black tooth fellow with the limp. That's a fine way to talk about your father, Mary. <laughs> Is it the lad with the red hair and the skin rashes? <laughs> Alan O'Toole. I wouldn't be seen dead with him, Catherine Long. <laughs> Just as well, because the RIC picked him up yesterday evening, and by all accounts, he's half dead himself. What did he do? Well, apparently, him and this other fellow went... Fractured. A family, a nation, a dream. September 1920. Six policemen killed, you say, Father. Sit in there now. Oh, thanks, Joseph. That's right. Milltown Malbe. Only about ten days ago. Oh, that smells delicious, Mrs. Barry. Ah, now it's nothing, Father. Sure, aren't we only delighted to have you. Help yourself now. now. I always look forward to your Sunday roasts, Mrs. Barry. Six dead, be God. That's a shocking state of affairs. Oh, it is right enough. And Father O'Brien, my friend in Galway, tells me that people are being dragged out of their beds in the middle of the night and flogged in the street. Oh, that's enough. Thanks. No. It's true, Joseph. Happening in Cork, too. Careful now, it's hot. And two Sinn Féin men just shot for no reason in Tipperary last week. Happening all over the country, it seems. Careful now, Mal. Don't spill that water. It seems we've been spared the worst of it in these parts, thank God. I don't know, Daddy. They're saying there's at least ten people killed every week in Dublin. Oh, well, now, Dublin is a different kettle of fish. And don't forget that nasty business in Kill, or oh, that poor man. What poor man, Daddy? Nothing for you to worry about, Millie Molly. You go on in there and help Mammy. She's not able to manage without you. Is it the man who's starving himself to death beyond in Brixton Prison? We say prayers for him every day in school, so we do. Do you think he will die, Daddy? Sure, you don't need to be worrying about that, Millie Molly. You go help Mammy Moll. Good girl. Mary O'Brien says he must be like a skeleton now. She says he's definitely going to be turned into a saint. Are you going to make him into a saint, Father? Oh, well, no. That wouldn't be my job, Molly. That would be a job for the Holy Father himself. Now, do what your daddy says and run in now and help your mammy. I'd love to be a saint. I wouldn't like to have to starve myself, though. Moll, help your mother. What are they teaching them in schools these days at all? Sure, she's only a child. Hard to shield them from it, Joseph. And they're going to hear about these things. Sure, wasn't the police barracks raided the only the other day? Very fortunate that somebody wasn't murdered, so I've heard. I don't think it was that bad, Father. They stole guns, son. Guns and ammunition. Well, what do you think they're going to do with them? More senseless death and destruction. You're right, Father. Those officers in the station could have been killed. I think it's a disgrace, so I do. How could it be a disgrace, Mary, when the church itself has come down on our side? Ah, well, now, Sean, I don't think... In human oppression. That's what they called it. Am I right, Father? You're not right. Now, now, the Father is only here for a Sunday dinner. Let's leave politics out of it. Why, the whole world can't just live in pieces beyond me. A bit hard to live in peace when a man only trying to do a day's work has his life threatened by gurriers in masks. The only gurriers in this country are the ones supposed to be running it. Sean... You've no idea what you're talking about, Sean Barry. Oh, my sincere apologies, Mary. I wasn't aware that being a world expert on fashion and hair colours qualifies a person to be a political commentator. That's enough. You think you know it all, Sean? I think I know more than you. You might be surprised the things I know. Father, will, will you lead us in grace, please? I'd be delighted, Mrs. Barry. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Who would that be knocking at this hour? Why in God's name don't they come around the front? Sean Barry! Sean Barry! Urgent message for Sean Barry! Uh, I better get that. For God's sake, keep your voice down. What is it? Are you Sean Barry? I am. Urgent message from Paddy Corgan. Here, he says you've got 20 minutes. Only about 15 now by my reckoning. It took me a good five minutes to get here. What is it, son? A top secret mission for the volunteers. Asher, I don't know how they manage without you. Sean? He probably has to go and lick the arse of Paddy Colgan. <gasps> you know, I believe he has a team of volunteers set up to do just Father, that. Father, I'm so sorry. Mary! That's no language for a young lady. And what Father Dempsey here is our guest. Sorry, Mammy. 
I'm really sorry, Father. I completely forgot myself there What's for a minute. What's wrong, Sean? Sure. Don't be worrying about me. I've heard worse in my time. Sean, talk to us. What's happening? I have to go. Oh, for God's sake. Do you have to be at their beck and call at all times of the day and night? Can you not have your bit of dinner first? I can't, Mammy. No. I'm sorry. What's wrong, Sean? You've gone terrible white. I'd go white too if I had to like Paddy Colgan's arse. Mall? Does it say where you have to go? On the back. Here. You better get going. What do you need? Will someone please tell me what's going on? The RIC want to question him, Bridget. The RIC? Oh, Jesus Christ, begging your pardon, Father. What have you done? It's a misunderstanding. What's a misunderstanding? Out with it, now. Bridget, he really has to go. I can't talk about it, Mammy. I'm sorry. But if they find me here... What of it? Answer their questions. If you run now, son, they'll only think you're guilty. <sighs> ah, no. Ah, son. Sean. What have you done? Nothing, Mammy. Nothing. Honest to God. You know what they're like. They just want to question me. That's all it says. I'm not being arrested or anything. But once they have me, Mammy, they won't let go. You know that. Will they make you starve yourself like that fella in Brixton Prison? No, Millie Molly. Don't you worry about that. There's nobody in the wide world could make me starve myself. Where do you have to go? Dublin. There's a safe house. How will you get to Dublin on a Sunday evening? Should there, there be no trains running? I don't know. I'll just leave here for the moment and figure it out. I'll take the bicycle. Maybe I can catch a lift on the road. Don't be doing that, John. It's not safe. You never know who's going to pick you up. I'll pack a bag for you. He can't bring a bag with him, Bridget. Sure, it'll be clear to everyone he's a man on the run. I don't have the time anyway. Look, they'll be here in ten minutes. Do you think maybe I could hide out in poor Breed's for the night? No, you cannot. Poor Breed is enough in our place with the little lad not settling. That poor child would lose his life if the RIC came banging on their door. I think you'd just better go now, Sean. You can't get caught. You can't just go outside like that either. Sure, everybody knows who you are. They'll pick you up in no time. I've a big coat you could wear. It might disguise you a bit. You could wear my new scarf if you like. The one Mammy knitted for me. I have an idea that might work. Sean, quickly. Here. Just put on my cassock. Oh, Father, no. That's not necessary at all. Yes, it is, Bridget. Here, Father. Let me help. Just put your hands up there. Uh, I've got it. You look funny, Father. Oh, I do, don't I? I feel funny too, Moll. Now, take the Beretta too, Sean. I left it over there on the sideboard. Well, the RIC tend not to question priests, I find. Now, make your way to the college. Ask for Father Hipwell. He's a good man. Tell him I sent you. They have visitors from Dublin all the time. Uh, one more priest in the car on the way back won't make too much difference. Oh, Father, thank you. Don't go just yet, Sean. I've something you might need. Hang on there now. All right, Joseph. You're a good man, Father Dempsey. I won't forget this. I'll pray for you, Sean. Will you give him your blessing, Father, before he goes? Keep him safe on the road. I will, of course. In the name of the Father and the Son, go in peace and safety. I'll be seeing you, little brother. Stay safe, Sean. Bye, Molly. See you soon. Don't be starving yourself, Sean. I won't. I promise. I'll be lonely without you, Mary. No one to fight with me. Friends. Friends. Give me a hug. Please be careful, Sean. I don't want anything to happen to you. Of course I will. The ladies of Maynooth would be distraught if anything was to happen to Sean Barry, now wouldn't they? <laughs> How will they manage without you? God knows. Here, a bit of money. You'll need it. You're a good man, Joseph Barry. I'm so sorry, ma'am. I know you're disappointed in me. I'm not disappointed in you, son. I could never be disappointed in you. Sure, look at the cut of you. You make a very handsome priest. And what mother wouldn't be bursting with pride? Bye, ma'am. Look after yourself, Sean. Come back to me in one piece. I will, mammy. I promise. Father Hipwell, right, Father? Father Hipwell. He'll get you sorted. Right. I'll send word as soon as I'm safe. See y'all soon. Um, I'd better be going too. Wouldn't do for the RIC to find me here in this garb. They'd know immediately where to look for Sean. Oh, Father, I don't know where we'd be without you. 
Oh, and you didn't even get a bite to eat, God, no. Just let me get a plate together for you to take home. Not at all, not at all. The RIC will be here before you know it. You've enough to be doing. Thank you, Father, for everything. Uh, now, good I... night, Joseph. Good night, all. Good night, Father. Good night, Father. Oh, God, what a mess. What are we going to do at all? I'm starving. Can we eat now? Oh, for God's sake, Mal, can you think of nothing but your belly? I think Mal might have the right idea. What, Joseph? The Mary, RIC are... Mary, will you please like... take away the father's plate and Sean's too. Wash them up. Now move up, everyone. Put food in your plates and start eating. What, Joseph? Everyone. When the RIC arrive, we're having a bit of dinner. We don't know where Sean is. Do we have to say grace again, or can we just eat? I'd say we can just eat, Molly. The roast looks... Ah, no, I was just getting started. We don't know where Sean is. Joseph. Sergeant Tom Dwyer. To what do I owe the pleasure? I'm sorry about this. I'm here in an official capacity. I see. This is Officer Stiff and Officer Hughes. We're here to bring your Sean in for questioning. Sean, you say? That's right, Joseph. We need to question Sean. About what, can I ask? We'd, uh, we'd rather not reveal that for the moment, if you don't mind. It's a confidential matter. I- I'm sure you understand. Sean's not here. Not here? No. Would you mind if we came in to have a look for ourselves, like? <laughs> is it that you don't believe me, Tom Dwyer? Not at all, Joseph. Not at all. It's just... We need to confirm these things. All above board, you know? I don't, actually. Time was when a man would take his neighbour at his word. Yes, well, change in times, old timer. We've got a warrant to search the property, and Sarge and Dwyer don't need your permission. Officer Stiff. Can we come in, Joseph? We're disturbing your dinner. Very sorry, Mrs. Barry. Yes, Mr. Dwyer. We were looking for Sean? I think Mr. Barry has already told you he's not here. That's right. Have you any idea where he might be? None at all, Mr. Dwyer. Will that be all? We, uh, we'd like to search the house, if that's all right. And if it's not? I have a warrant. I'm very sorry, Mrs. Barry. Officer Stiff, will you please search the bar in the cellar? Nobody is going near my cellar without me to supervise. Fine. Officer Hughes, please take the rest of the ground floor. I'll take the upper floor. Nobody's rooting through my bedrooms without me there either. I'll go with you, Mammy, just in case. Come on, Ma, you come too. A fine spectacle you have to make of me altogether. Is this how you treat all your girlfriends, Joseph Hughes? Mary, love, I'm so sorry. I didn't know the suspect was your brother. Oh, so it's the suspect now, is it? What am I to you, then? Huh? The suspect's sister? I swear I had no idea. I thought we were picking up a customer in the pub. On a Sunday afternoon, when every God-fearing place in the village is closed. Have you no sense, Joseph Hughes? I didn't think. I'm just doing my job, Mary. Same as any man. Except it's not the same, is it? Don't go into my room, Mr. Dwyer. It's private. No! Mammy, tell him to get out of my room! It's not the same at all. Mary, please. I love you with all my heart. You know what I do for a living, sweetheart. You've always known I've never made a secret of it. And you're proud of it? I can't tell a lie, Mary. I believe I'm doing the right thing. This is who I am, love. I can't change who I am. I love you, Mary. I can't change that either. What's going on? Just finishing up in here. Nothing on this level, Sergeant Dwyer. Nothing is right. The rest of the RIC traders are leaving now. Bye-bye. Goodbye, Miss Barry. Yes, goodbye. I hope we don't see you around here again. Apologies for the intrusion, Mrs Barry. Goodbye, Mr Dwyer. They went into my room, Daddy. If you hear anything from Sean, you might let us know. I don't think so. I'm sorry, Joseph. I don't want you near my pub or my shop again.
Mary. Mammy's wondering if you can put Mal to bed. <coughs> Are you all right? Sean will be grand, you know. Leave me alone. I'll be down in a minute. That or I see man you were talking to today. He was the same one as in the pub on the day of the rally, wasn't he? I wasn't talking to him. We're living in dangerous times, Mary. What are you saying? You should be careful. I'll send Maul up. Fractured is a Down at Heel production, made possible by a Creative Ireland grant through Kildare County Council. All episodes were written by Joe Bergen, Brendan Farrell, Claire Joyce and Martina Riley. Sound engineer is Brendan Farrell. This episode has been supported by Maynooth Soccer Club. <laughs>